It may be raining outside, but that doesn't mean we can't talk about the same second chances. It's a standard documentary made by one of the most renowned documentarians of the 21st century, Morgan Nelville, who most known for Won't You Be My Neighbor and winning the Oscar with 20 Feet from Stardom. The subject of this movie is about Mike Veck, the son of a baseball hustler and former White Sox owner Bill Veck, who changed the way people experience going to the ball game, and his son first causing such a mistake that follows his growth from taking what his fought taking what he learned from his father and maturing into his own man with a family that helped support his second chance of being a part of professional baseball and the joy and tragedy the rest of his life followed. The movie is sometimes narrated by Jeff Daniels in third person while Mike narrates in first person himself at other times between the talking heads of the people in Mike's life where there are also filmed flashbacks where he plays his father and his younger self is played by Charlie Day in a role that, while I personally didn't see past an actor playing a role, he is good, much like this movie. The movie isn't anything special as a documentary, but the story it tells is very fascinating, even to non-baseball fans, in my opinion. And if you are a baseball fan, I'm sure this interests you all the more. Probably. Not knowing anything about this guy beforehand, learning he and his father pretty much did all the things in baseball I'll never, I never knew they came up with, put a smile on my face and shocked me what was the event that caused Mike's downfall. Mike's idea of like people doing something ironically and not realizing people were going to take it seriously, it makes me think about how these days it's like, yeah, you find anyone on the internet who you think is being sarcastic, but it's like, no, they are dead serious as much as it surprises you. Now, with that being said, uh... It truly does come across as the story through himself and for others. It truly does come across as a man who means well and with only others who gave him a chance to allow himself and others to find a new life in a sport they love, especially from his time at the St. Paul Saints with his fantastic interviews that from people like Daryl Strawberry and other examples. The final part of the movie focuses on his relationship with Zar, which definitely brought me to tears by the end. Which means this movie is doing something right if it got me to cry. Really, it's not a great movie. The pacing can feel a little off at times, and it's not nothing that spe spe and it's nothing that special. Like I'm not gonna pretend like this is one of the best documentaries of the year. Like I haven't watched that many documentaries of this year, but like, what am I supposed to say? But like any good story, if the person at the center interests me, I'm glad I spend my time learning about them, as it gets me to rethink how I look at myself because of that. And really, you're going to be entertained for something in this movie, whether it be certain parts of the story or really just uh, Charlie Day's awful haircut at the beginning. With that being said, I give The Saint of Second Chances a 7 out of 10. And now, A Million Miles Away. A Million Miles Away is a biopic about Jose M. Hernandez, the first Mexican-American astronaut about his struggles and his desire to reach for the stars when he's told so many times it might not happen and proving them wrong thanks to family and friends. That's about it. And honestly, there is like nothing to say about this movie that isn't obvious. I like at first when the movie had Jose's family, where he he and his family, well, when he was a kid and they were driving on the road, where behind them is grown up Jose, played by Michael Pena, and then it goes on top of the car with the movie style. It's like, that's the personality I was looking for in this movie throughout that doesn't really pop up again. Oh, well, I mean, there was this CGI butterfly that looked fake. I mean, there's the metaphor of why it's there and all that, and symbolism or whatever, but, like, you know, it, it, it looked fake the whole t every single time it was there. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. I thought that... I just thought this movie was a pretty trope-filled, obvious, cliche-written story. Like I, like I said before, and I say this again, I don't mind cliches in a movie if it makes the plot work or feels organic or new. And it honestly doesn't really here. It's just one of those movies I wouldn't call Oscar bait, rather a movie made to elevate its star and once award season is over, falls out of conversation. I don't really want to list a few examples to piss people off. It's just, let's be honest, we all felt like that with certain movies. Which, that being said, Michael Pena, who's been good in dramas and com comedies as a supporting actor, I'm glad he gets a chance to show off his skills as a lead and does it really great here and was the main thing that made me like this movie and felt compelled to keep watching it. I think this movie works for what it is and what it represents, and in the movie, the lead is constantly asked why he wants to go to space, and he doesn't know, and I think that response works, as, you know, it represents, you know, it's not about what it is specifically, rather, it's what it represents, or, you know, that feeling and whatnot, like, I don't know, that's what it may work, it's just the only other thing I like, probably, was, uh, this speech that he gives that finally gets him into the space program, and, like, one random guy claps for him, like, that, that guy entertained me. The movie just struggles mostly with being two hours long and the pacing is very slow. Like, sure, it's meant to make me feel the struggle, but it's like, 
when he spends so much little time with his wife or family, his connections feel weak, since I couldn't tell if one of his five kids was, like, the youngest or the oldest. Like, I really lost track of, like, okay, you have, like, one kid you're kind of spending time with. I don't know any of your four kids. I don't remember even their names. It's like, even his wife says she doesn't want to be that wife in the movies. Well, okay, that's not how she says it, I'm paraphrasing. But she's like, I don't want to be the wife that, you know, drags you down. It's like, yeah, but you still kind of are. And honestly, you're kind of right, because this guy... And I don't know the circumstances of this guy in real life, but it's like, dude, I get it. You're, you want to be an astronaut, and you've been trying for years, so it's like, you're a father of five. I think your priorities lie elsewhere. Not to say it's like, I feel like they didn't support him, or like, there's any hatred. Please, please do not read into that. That's what I'm saying. It's just... I don't know, I wish it was kind of done better for his connection to his friends and family. There's a really sad scene where, well, okay, without spoiling it, there's someone who dies, and I'm not going to say who it is, and it's like, damn, Michael Pena really steals the show, because I still think the hard fantastic performance of Michael Pena makes this an okay movie that I think is passable. No, I wouldn't say passable. I still recommend it for people interested in it, because, like, if this story interests you, and you're like, yeah, I don't care if it's a little cliche, I want to see it because, you know, it might inspire people or it might interest you and give you that sense of joy. I understand. It's just, you know, though in a year of great biopics like Air and Oppenheimer, even with that, that comparison, this movie would still kind of fall short in my opinion. But as is, it's an okay movie. It's not the most interesting movie you could watch. It's not the most fascinating subject, but it's important and I'm sure other people who find this important will feel the impact more. As for me, I recommend it. It's just not something I'm going to think much of by next year. With that being said, I give A Million Miles Away a 6 out of 10.